Well, hello, friends. Welcome to the Serenity OS update for June 2020. Now, before we begin, as always, let me tell you about sponsorship real quick. So the Serenity operating system and all of my content about it is always going to be free and open source. But if you would like to support my work and maybe one day make it possible for me to do this full time, then there are three donation options. So I'm on Patreon and GitHub sponsors for those interested in making a recurring monthly donation. And I'm also on PayPal if you prefer making a one-time donation. Uh, and you can find links to all of these services in the description below. And of course, a gigantic thank you to everybody who's already supporting me in some way. The number of supporters is steadily growing and I'm really happy to say that now I'm just over a third of the way towards being able to sustain doing this full time. So uh, very, very exciting development. Um, okay, so let's talk about June. It's been a bit calmer this month, for sure. Um, May was intense. June has been a bit more laid back. Um, I think as lockdowns are lifted around the world and life is cautiously returning to normal, uh, people spend a bit less time at their computer and uh, maybe a bit more time doing other stuff. But nevertheless, we've managed to get a whole bunch of things done. So let me talk about some of it. So personally, I've spent a lot of time in the browser this month. Um, the new HTML parser, which is based on the HTML spec, is now the only parser. We've completely replaced the old parser. So really, really awesome. And here it is um, parsing and rendering the HTML spec, which the parser is based on. Um, I've also spent a lot of time on the ACID2 uh, standards compliance test. It's an older test, but it's a really, really good driver for um, developing like that CSS box model support and um, various uh, interesting CSS and, and layout features of a browser. And um, we started from absolutely uh, nothing at the start of the month. And this is how, how far it has gotten so far. And it's a really, really good test. and. Um, it's, it's a bit slow work, it's a lot of work, but uh, you spend an hour or two and then you get one of these little boxes to move to the right place and it's very satisfying. So uh, it's this thing where we just have to do it incrementally until uh, the test passes. Now, um, another thing that's really cool this month is um, I started working on multi-process browsing. So this is eventually going to become um, uh, a multi-process architecture for the browser app, but it's still in a prototype stage. Um, and what we're looking at here is a web browser process and uh, it's separated from the GUI process. So there's a service process, if you go and look here, um, a service process here called web content, uh, which renders the web content. And it's running as an unprivileged user called web content. And if we look at his set of pledges, it's a very, very, very stripped down sandbox process. So it has no internet access, no file system access beyond um, beyond like uh, looking at fonts and things like that. And uh, it's, it's looking very, very promising. So this will eventually become the process per tab um, support structure for the browser. Um, but of course, it will require um, a fair bit amount of refactoring in the web engine before it can fully uh, we can fully switch the browser over. Um, but yeah, so sandbox web content, very exciting um, for the future. And then another thing actually that you can see on this test here is that uh, these eyes here, these uh, extremely beautiful eyes. They are actually an interlaced PNG image, which we didn't support, but then support was added by Paul. So thank you, Paul. And now we can see the eyes. Um, and some other stuff that's new in the browser is this is an iframe. We now have basic support for iframes. Um, there's other stuff like Z index support, paint order, um, we have a resource cache so that we don't download the same resource many times if we can avoid it, things like that. And uh, another exciting thing for development is that the JavaScript bindings for the browser uh, are now generated rather than hand written. So when you want to expose a function, a C++ function to JavaScript, you just have to add one line to a file, hopefully. Um, 
and it will just magically become available in JavaScript. Now, obviously, there's a there's a a, a bit of work for that magic to click, but um, but it does work in, in many cases, so it's really cool. Um, and I guess I can't talk about the browser without talking about JavaScript. So uh, if we look at our JavaScript test directory here, um, we can see that we have a fair number of tests and the number of tests keeps growing. Um, 247 of them. So a lot of cool work on JavaScript uh, this month. We got support for classes, we got proxies, uh, we got big int support, uh, we got the JSON object. Uh, so a lot of cool stuff and a lot of people worked on it. So thank you, uh, Linus, Jack, Matt, Marchin, um, Stellar7, and Sergey. Uh, I think those were the people who worked on LibJS this month. Uh, and okay, so let's talk about something else. <laughs> um, but I'll still use the browser to show you. Oh, I thought. Okay, here we go. So we got a lot of new image decoders this month. So here is um, BMP images. Uh, we got we got uh, BMP support from Matt. So thank you, Matt. Uh, we got a JPEG decoder from Devashish. Um, we got the interlaced PNG that I already mentioned from Paul. Paul also did um, ICO, so icons support, uh, which allows us to um, show fab icons that are ICO files. And the layout here is broken. That's my fault. <laughs> I need to I need to fix table layout. Um, but yeah, so you can see this this Google fab icon here is uh, pretty nice, and it shows up here as well which is a new feature. So we have a way to set um, icons in text boxes. It's also used in File Manager to show a folder icon here. Something I, I think this looks really, really nice. And then, of course, when you go to a different page, you get a different file icon. I like it. Uh, and, uh, oh, I was talking about image decoders, right? So we had the BMP, uh, but then we also got a whole bunch of other ones. Here are some JPEGs. Uh, I'm not going to scroll down. <laughs> um, and uh, down here are PBM. We got PBM, PNM, PGM, PPM. Um, so thank you, Hussein, for implementing all of those. And um, I hope I'm not forgetting somebody's image decoder. <laughs> there was so much work on image decoders. It's really, really awesome because the system is it's just um, so nice when images start appearing where they were previously not appearing. Um, and another random thing I worked on this month was support for um, Hacker News. So now you can, you can load Hacker News in our browser and actually <laughs> read it, which is pretty cool. Uh, there are some layout issues, but, uh, but I think it's, it's nice. It's nice to have Hacker News. You gotta have Hacker News. Um, and oh, and oh, I forgot about image decoding. So um, if we go back to here and we load up the BMP suite, for example. So um, when we load images in the browser, they come from an untrusted source very often, right? So in this case, not super untrusted. Also, I noticed the fab icon here. <laughs> this is a stale fab icon. Uh, that's a bug. Um, so images on the web are often from an untrusted source. So uh, it's not very nice that we would uh, run image decoding in the web uh, browser if we can avoid it. And now we have a way to avoid it. So uh, I've added a service to the system called Image Decoder. And it's basically a um, uh, on-demand service for decoding images. So the way it works is you just open a connection to the image decoder and you send it some raw image data, like a raw BMP file or a raw JPEG file or whatever, and it will try to decode it uh, and then send it back to you as a bitmap if it works out. Now, the beauty of this is that the image decoder service is completely sandboxed and it can't do anything other than uh, try to decode the image data that you give to it. So uh, this removes a huge um, 
potential bug surface, right? Because image decoders have to deal with um, weird binary formats, and uh, it's 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 an area where like mature um, production systems ha tend to have problems in image decoding, and it's a it's a big security concern. So being able to sandbox that entirely into its own service, um, it's it's really awesome. And there's a little bit of a performance penalty, but I think that's something we can address with kernel optimizations and things. So um, the page that you saw here, it actually loaded and decoded each of these um, EMP files in a separate process entirely. So it's pretty cool. Um, another thing which we have is that um, unresponsive apps are now detected, that they're unresponsive. So. Maybe we can uh, make this app stop responding here if we do something stupid like loop forever. Um, so it's gonna let us do this, um, which is a bit silly, but yeah. So you can see what happens. It will get into a not responding state uh, and we'll gray out the app so you can see that it's not responding. And then of course we'll have to go and uh, kill it somehow. So why don't you die? Okay. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, and then I guess um, since we had all of this output here, I can show you that scrolling through the output is now um, a bit faster because uh, Benoit added this thing called scroll length, which um, is basically how many steps will scroll with every mouse wheel turn. So. Um, I've set it to a default of four, which is, it's, it just feels kind of just right to me. I don't know. Well, we might have to tweak it a little bit, but previously we would scroll one line of text at a time every time you would uh, nudge the wheel and it took forever to scroll to the top of the JavaScript test suite. <laughs> so uh, this is a really awesome setting by Benoit. So thank you for that. Um, and. Another random thing that was uh, worked on this month was Keyboard Mapper. So this is an app by Hussein, which uh, allows you to edit uh, key maps. So if we go to, uh, where's that thing here? Key maps and open some key map like the German one. Uh, you can actually see uh, the, key, the key map live here while you're while you're editing it so then we can say that this thing here should make a make a big x or whatever i don't know <laughs> but this is definitely a way way nicer way to edit key maps than what we had before which was you would just edit the text file manually now you can do it like this and you can see exactly what what's where so thank you hussein for working on that uh very awesome addition and i like the way the the keys look like real keys a little bit it's very neat um, okay, so uh, then we also had a whole bunch of uh, kernel work this month by uh, Nico, who um, I think he, he wanted to port Ninja. We now have a port of the Ninja build system, and to do that, he had to uh, implement a bunch of things in the kernel. So now we have um, POSIX spawn, this is called, and we have pselect and peephole. And he also added a bunch of uh, UID and GID related stuff, like uh, set EUID, set EGID. Uh, and we have now a much better implementation of uh, UID and GID in the kernel. So thank you very much, Nico, for working on that. Uh, There's a lot of, lot of nice stuff that happened in the kernel. Uh, it's just harder to show, but it, it is good stuff. So then final thing that I can think of right now is that we now have this magic variable in the JavaScript REPL, which is the underscore that gives you the last result. So you can you can make like a little computation, like three by three, and then you can uh, add to it like that. Uh, and that was added by Linus, I think. And it's a nice little thing. Um, and I like it. So thank you, Linus, for adding that. Okay, so I think this was everything I wanted to show you today. Um, so thank you very much for checking in with and, uh, and seeing what we're up to. Uh, it's been, like I said, it's been a bit of a calmer month, but I think maybe we needed that after the intensity of the 
uh, previous month. But yeah, so the project keeps chugging along. We're all having a good time and development is progressing very nicely, I think. So everything's good. Uh, so thank you again for, for stopping by. Uh, if you ever want to chat, there is an active community on IRC. We are in the Serenity OS channel on Freenode, and you can find us there. And that's it. So see you next time.